Hi everyone. No new questions today, so instead I thought I'd do a walk around of the race car. I often get asked about what it is, what's gone into it, and, and how to turn a road car into something that you can take circuit racing. So uh, we'll take a look at it now. The, um, the car is a 1997 BMW E36 328i. Uh, it left the factory uh, as a four-door, four-seat saloon car. Um, and 17 years and 177,000 miles later, uh, I paid James Lewis Barnard the princely sum of 900 quid and became the new owner. Uh, it's changed a little bit since then. Uh, apart from the obvious things of, of, of stickers and spoiler and, and different wheels, um, the most significant changes into turning it into a racing car are inside. So we'll take a look in there. Um, and as you can see, quite unrecognisable in comparison to a standard road car. Um, what's happened in here is that all of the interior has been removed, so the rear seats are out, the carpets, any sound deadening, uh, and any unnecessary trim panels uh, are all gone. Uh, and that's in the aim of reducing weight. Um, in total, around 170 kilos has been removed from the car. Um, it also allows access for the car's most critical safety feature, uh, which is this, um, called a roll cage. Uh, this set of steel tubes bolted together inside the car uh, forms a safety cell much stronger than the car's original body was. Um, so while it's pretty intrusive and not something that you could practically fit in a road car, uh, it makes a very, very safe survival cell uh, should we have a big accident out on the circuit. Uh, and this is bolted together and fitted to, uh, to feet here, which are welded. Into the, uh, into the floor of the car. Uh, another critical change is the driver's seat. Um, you can't go racing with a normal um, road, road going seat uh, and instead what we have here is what's commonly called a bucket seat. This fiberglass shelled Cobra seat um, not only gives a much safer and stiffer shell because it's not, it's not adjustable, the back doesn't recline or anything so there's nothing there to snap. Uh, it also provides safe mounting for these racing harnesses. We'll take a close look at that in a moment. Um, another thing we need is a fire extinguisher. Um, rather than with rally cars where you have a fire extinguisher which can be taken out and handheld uh, to fight a fire w by the driver, uh, this one's plumbed in instead. So we have here a fire extinguisher attached to the floor um, and it has nozzles plumbed in. One here for the fuse box, you can see the little blue uh, nozzle there. Another under the, uh, under, the, under the steering wheel for me, and then there are two more in the engine bay uh, for, the, um, for the fuel rail and for the, uh, the exhaust system. Uh, we'll go around to the other side. For a clearer look at that seat, and you can see that the high sides make sure the driver is really firmly wedged in. Um, and the aim of this is to prevent you moving around too much um, whilst driving because if you're using any of your muscles to hold your body in place it's very distracting and also very tiring over, over the course of a stint. Um, steering wheel has changed uh, by, by preference really, you can run a standard steering wheel although you, you shouldn't have airbags because your body is retained in a different place to how it would normally be. Um, but this steering wheel has a bit of dish to it bringing the wheel closer to the driver which means you don't have to have your arms stretched out uh, a more comfortable driving position. Um, we can see switches added here, uh, one of which this pull handle here is for the fire extinguisher so I can actuate it from here uh, and the other one is for an electrical kill switch, another crucial piece of equipment for a racing car. Uh, and the idea of this is that if there's an accident, if the car is off the circuit or, uh, or if there's another problem um, I can reduce the risk of fire by stopping the engine here and that, kill, that kills all electrical power. So in some situations either we can't get to the ignition switch or, or it doesn't stop the engine, with this we can guarantee that it stops and the risk of a, a risk of fire or damage is reduced. These switches are repeated outside the car here so that if need be, if there is an accident and I can't get to them or, or the marshals want to actuate them from trackside they can do it there. Other essential items, a tow strap securely mounted uh, which allows the car to be pulled off track if needed and there's another one of those at the rear. Uh, and the final piece of equipment for, for a racing car is a rain light here. Um, this, has, uh, this has 50 LEDs, uh, much higher intensity than normal tail lights. Uh, and the idea of that is that on a, on a circuit, because it's a very flat surface and you have a lot of cars travelling at high speed close together, you get a huge amount of spray uh, and this rain light helps to pierce through that spray and make sure you can see cars ahead in, in bad weather. 
that's a, that's an overview of the uh, of the safety requirements and, and what's needed to um, to make the car uh, legal to race. Uh, in terms of performance modifications, we'll have a quick look at the engine and oh, bonnet pins as well. Uh, you have to be able to open the bonnet from outside the car to be allowed to race. Uh, that's again so that marshals can do it from outside if necessary during an accident. So under here we have what looks very much like a standard BMW straight six engine and, and it nearly is. Um, there's a custom air intake here which is fed from a feed down by the, down by the fog lamp here. Uh, gets a little bit better airflow than the standard air box. Uh, and we have pipes off here for an oil cooler, um, which the car didn't have from factory, um, but because it's spending a lot of time at high engine speed, uh, and often with reduced cooling flow because there's cars in front and blocking the airflow into the radiators, uh, we've added that to improve durability. Um, the intake manifold is from, is from a different model, from a 325, which gives slightly better flow. Uh, but otherwise, everything's nearly standard under here, except for fire extinguisher, again, one for the exhaust, one towards the towards the intake and fuel rail uh, and also these cables here are for thermocouples to measure um, coolant temperature down here and oil temperature down the dipstick just to give me a bit of information about, about how the car's behaving um, but otherwise quite standard under here so, so contrary to popular belief not many of the changes made are to the engine uh, the car makes around 220 horsepower which is ample for the class it races in One of the most crucial components is brakes, and uh, haha, with these wheels we've got fitted, it's very difficult to see much of them. Um, behind these lovely BBS wheels um, are slightly bigger brakes from uh, a BMW 330 and endurance racing pads. Um, the brake pads are one of the most critical things to select carefully um, because they're doing, they're absorbing a lot of heat, a lot of abuse over the course of a race. Um, they need to last the distance, which in our case two or even three hours, but also not require replacing too regularly because it does become expensive. So I use endurance racing pads in here, um, performance friction 08 compound. Um, the tyres here are, are road going tyres because the car is still driven to and from events, um, but for racing we use semi-slick tyres. Um, this one here, a pre-loved Nankang AR1, um, a very very grippy tyre which as you can see has very little tread, just these small water dispersing tread blocks here. Um, and the idea of that is to reduce the movement of tread blocks as you corner, to reduce heat buildup in the tyre. Um, and these run a very very soft compound um, compared to a road tyre, so they operate at higher temperatures and they produce a lot more grip to improve cornering speeds. Um, suspension changes, yes. Um, different springs and dampers all round. Um, I use gas gold coilovers on this car um, and that allows a little bit more adjustment than standard. So the, the dampers are adjustable. We can make the car, it's particularly useful for this one because we make it soft for road use uh, and then stiffen it up for, um, for circuit or to change the balance of the car in the wet. And uh, I prematurely closed the bonnet because we didn't comment on these adjustment plates we have here. Um, so these at the top of the damper, um, these camber adjustment plates, by unbolting these screws, allow us to move the strut this way, which is going to change the camber angle of the tyre uh, for different conditions or to achieve different setups. Something else I want to talk about is the stickers on the car. Apart from the race numbers on the side, which are required so it can be identified easily from trackside, uh, the rest are sponsors, but not in the way that people typically think. The majority of them are, are series sponsors. The, the Tegiwa ones are the, the sponsors of the Club Enduro and Road Sports series that I normally race in. Uh, and the two on the bottom here, Upper Click and Endurance Financial on the back there, also series sponsors. Um, the others, uh, we have only a few. Um, the the Powerflex sticker on the front, uh, they supplied some polyurethane suspension bushes for me at a little bit of a discount for some, for some exposure over the last year. Uh, and also down here, um, Part Box and Coord Sport are the um, other suppliers of my brakes. Um, and SGM photography, uh, Sammy Nudd, is a superb trackside photographer at nearly all of 750 Motor Club's meetings, so I put that on there to support her and, and raise a bit of awareness. Um, but cash sponsorship in club racing is extremely rare and um, very few drivers are actually being paid by any companies to race or to run stickers on the cars and if you do see big sponsorship it's usually the driver's own company or, or a family company or something like that. Uh, we are almost entirely self-funded and self-supporting uh, and in this case the, the stickers are on there to, um, to raise exposure for companies who've helped me out in the past with, with discount on parts that I'd, I'd need anyway. Um, something to keep in mind when um, uh, when considering what goes into uh, into club racing, uh, sponsorship in cash terms 
possible but extremely rare and usually requires a lot of investment in time. Okay, that's all for today. A bit of a whistle stop tour to show you around the car and, uh, and what changes have been made to it since it, uh, since it first came to me. Uh, I hope it's helped clear up a few questions um, you might have had. But if there's anything else, do please let me know. We can keep recording for as long as there's new things to talk about. Thanks a lot. Take it easy.